Hello guys, let me take you to an introduction session to SAP EWM and I will also discuss about multiple inventory management and WM solutions, warehouse management solutions offered by SAP. It all started with SAP ERP WM in 1993. This is part of the SAP ECC landscape. So basically SAP ECC, it was introduced with LETRA and LEWM. And it was embedded in the same box. The main functions of this warehouse management solution was to manage the inventory at the bin level. And all the goods movements, they could be managed and controlled with the help of transfer orders. There was additionally an activity monitor, WAM, warehouse activity monitor, to monitor the goods movements. And to connect to the mobile data entry, it was integrated with RF solution. Connection to specialized external systems, it was also could be done using an interface. Then SAP came up with, so when you want to implement WM, you have two options. You can implement a full-fledged WM solution within part of ERP, or you could also implement a lean WM solution, which is a simplified version of WM. They are same solutions, based on same principles, but Lean WM does not manage the inventory at the bin level. Hence, it is a good solution for any customer using fixed bin strategy. Now, SAP decentralized WM. What is this decentralized WM? What is the need to have a decentralized WM solution? When we discussed about the first two, SAP ERP WM and ERP Lean WM, we think of an ECC box which contains WM as part of ECC. And when we say decentralized WM, it's like you take out the WM part, you take out the WM solution out of the ECC box and deploy it in an additional ECC box. So you have two ECC boxes. You have deployed WM as a decentralized solution in an additional ECC box. Now, what is the need to do that? Think of businesses that need to manage large number of stock keeping units. That is SKUs. Or maybe they manage large number of shipments, huge volume of shipments. That may include inbound shipments, outbound shipments, ad hoc movements, internal movements, which can be planned movements, unplanned movements, that is, ad hoc movements. So the expectation from a WM solution is a quick response time. When you have such a huge data, such a huge volume, huge shipments, large number of stock keeping units, you would expect a quick and fast WM solution so that the dispatches can be optimized, they can be quick and faster. Now if ECC and WM, they are part of same machine, and suppose ECC is down, or ECC is not available due to some maintenance, then, then WM solution is also down because it is embedded in the same box, which fundamentally means logistics activities cannot happen till the time ECC is up again. Along with that, if ECC and WM, they are part of same machine, update issues might be encountered. Guys who have SAP MM knowledge, SAP ECC knowledge, they can link to an example like dot stock requirement list, VBBE table update issues, quite common in SAP ECC. The table update issues happen quite often. So you can relate to that that the update issues might be encountered if you deploy ECC and WM in the same box, on the same machine. Along with that, you may also face performance issues when you deploy ECC and WM on the same box. Think of the bad job which is execute, being executed in ECC and being executed in WM, 
and the bad job the data inside the bad job the, it has the data which is dependent on both the systems so if you execute bad job in these systems the update issues the performance issues will also come now that is why sap came up with the idea to have an always available wm solution with minimum or no downtime at all without performance and update update issues so this led to an idea to deploy sap wm as a decentralized solution additional benefit that can be achieved is to be able to connect this decentralized wm system to any erp system and not just sap ecc interestingly in a decentralized wm system you can still physically deploy wm inside the ecc box on the same machine but then you have to logically distinguish them they will not be logically on the same machine they will be physically on the same machine but that is also decentralized wm either you logically distinguish them or you physically and logically distinguish them so that was the need and that's how sap came up with sap decentralized wm in which wm is deployed as an additional box in an ecc environment even if you have a decentralized setup whether you deploy ecc and wm on same machine physically or you logically distinguish them these two systems still need to communicate and hence in those cases the communication of the transactional data happen using bapi calls then sap came up with spm wm so in 2005 SAP released its SPM solution and EWM was an integrated part of SCM solution it was embedded inside the SCM solution so the SPM solution it was not a standalone decentralized WM it was deployed and was an integral part of SPM solution and then SAP came up with an idea to deploy SAP EWM on supply chain management platform So when SAP came up with this decentralized solution it was originally released on SCM platform and today also this is considered the most common deployment option the main benefit of deploying SAP EWM on SCM platform is performance and flexibility of the solution now when we say SAP so i am going to the first one sap erp wm again how it looks like it is like a same box same ecc box which houses sd mm pp qm as well as wm it's like you stay in the same house in the same flat with your mom and dad it looks like a funny example but you can think that you stay in the same house in the same flat with your mom and dad so that is basically sap erp wm when we say decentralized wm your moment that stays in one flat you stay in another flat so ecc box one box holds ecc systems as the mm pp qm and so on and the second box it houses sap wm solution and then the communication happens via bapi calls and when we say sap scm ewm so your mom and dad stays in one flat and you stay in a villa scm platform is like a villa a performance managed flexible solutions flexible platform which gives you an integrated environment without any communication issues without any update issues without any performance issues gives you 24 hours availability minimum or no downtime and the flexibility i will also talk about little bit about the deployment options i have mentioned the note this note explains the deployment options you can also have a look on this sap note to understand in detail about the deployment options so one of the options the most common options is to deploy sap ewm on scm platform and then you can manage the integration manage the communications the master data communication and the transactional data communication 
you will see these communications in the, in the classes to come. And this EWM system can be hosted as a standalone application in the SCM box, or you can also do shared, host, shared hosting. It can be deployed along with APO, along with TM, and so on. SAP EWM on a standalone machine, that is the second uh, deployment option. It can be again an ECC machine. And then last is SAP EWM as an add-on to SAP ECC. I would say that this is not a recommended option. SAP do not recommend to use SAP EWM as an add-on to SAP ECC. So the first one is the most common deployment option, SAP EWM on SAP SCM machine, SAP SCM platform. When we say data transfer, the communication between ECC and EWM should happen now. I'm discussing about the communication between ECC and SCM EWM. The communication is mainly pertaining to two types of data, master data and transactional data. When we say master data, it includes plant, shipping point, customer, vendor, material, class, characteristics, and batches. So this data, this master data goes to EWM system with the help of SIF. SIF that is core interface. I will discuss in detail about the core interface in the next class. And the transactional data communication happens with the help of BAPI codes. We will discuss about the distribution models and the integration models in the subsequent sessions.